Speaking of owners that let themselves down, Man United, uh, there's talks from some people that the deals for Amrabat and Kukurea are close. I want to ask you about Kukurea, first of all. <laughs> a year ago, and I, and I laugh like that as well, a year ago, everyone wanted Kukurea. Everybody rated him. He was this brilliant new left back. Pep, Pep wanted him. Tuchel wanted him. You fast forward 12 months, and he's now seen as a scrub. He is mid. He is average. Good or bad business for Man United, in your opinion? Um, what's the fee going to be? Is it a, is it a loan or something? It'd be a loan, so no idea what the fee would be. Probably all these wages, but a loan. Problem is, we, we do this a lot. I mean, there's, there's fans saying, oh, Gravenberch is finished because he had one bad season at Bayern Munich. He wasn't a bad player at Brighton. Yes, he's gone to Chelsea. And how many players don't don't turn up for Chelsea? Thousands. Right? It's very very few signing they get that's bang on the money. I, I, I wouldn't be that against it. I don't really see, like, because he's had one bad year at Chelsea, he's automatically he's a scrub, he's a flop. If you, if you don't go in, I know you've been looking at Sergio Regulon as well. Um, there was that Romano was talking about him, but I didn't re- I didn't realize he was still your player. <laughs> yeah, he, he went out on loan, didn't he, to Atletico? But yeah, if it's yeah, if it's yeah. a loan with just a straight loan with no option to buy or anything like that, I wouldn't be against it. I mean, how long is Luke Shaw going to be out for? Is he out for a long time? Well, for me, the fact we're looking at a replacement tells me he must be. He must be out for a good three or four or five months because. Why, if he's only out for like five, six weeks, you wouldn't go and purchase somebody. Where's the other guy? Where's Malassia? M- Malassia's due back soon as well. So it's it's an interesting one for me. It tells me that Luke Shaw's out for a considerable amount of time. Out, out of the two, out of Kukure and Regulon, I probably would, not just my bias, I probably would go for Regulon. I, I would. I, I would. I thought, I didn't think Regulon was bad for you lot. I didn't think he was that bad for you, really. I thought it was all right. Um... Kukurea is a weird one. There's a comment here that says, Terry, I guess uh, uh, Kukurea is a top player now. No, but we've seen him be a top player. And the one thing in my mind is I still would like to do it. If we do Kukurea, same with Regulon, you have to do that deal with an option to buy where we control it. And the team we're loaning them from can't. Because can't. the last thing you want, imagine you bring Kukurea in and at your club under your system, he cooks and we have seen players before move Premier League clubs and become better. We've seen players look poor under a certain manager at a club, a new guy comes in and they look amazing. Yeah. We've seen people be awful in the Prem, leave the Prem, come back a year or two later and be some of the greatest players the Premier League has ever seen. Yeah, so there's a part of me which is the optimist. It's like, oh, imagine we bring him in and he looks and he gets back to his Brighton days. There's another part of me that thinks I watched him for a year at Chelsea and the man. That is awful. What are we doing? Give a kid a chance. So I'm so like I'm 70, 80 percent. I don't want this deal, but I'm not going to lie. There is the the optimist in me that thinks mm. if he could produce for us like he did for Brighton in the season where he won their player of the year and their fans player of the year. What a coup that could be. What a brilliant signing that could be. But I a part, I just don't trust it. I, I think we're going to bring him in. I just think he's going to be awful for us like he was Chelsea. And we're going to be laughed at. You could probably get Regulon for, for like 20 million. You could do a loan probably of an option to buy for 20 million. He's only got a, two years left on his contract. He's out of the manager's plans. We've got Udoji now. I don't. I, I, I think Regulon, for the way you play, would probably be better. I think he's better defensively as well than than mm. No, I, I hear this. No, I hear that. I, I, I hear it. I, I, yeah, as I say, ideally, I don't want either. But it's 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 a situation that's created. There's a comment here that says that uh, Luke Shaw is not difficult to replace. It's not hard to replace. I hear you, but when you say that, who, who's better? Like who's attainable? In, who's attainable right now that moves the needle in Luke Shaw's position? And that's the question for you, Don. So you're saying he's not hard to replace. But I don't want to go from a this this shit. I'm, I'm I'm taking your can here. Say you tell me what you think he is out of ten, Luke Shaw. Say you think he's a five out of ten. I don't see the point of replacing him with a five and a half or a six. Yeah. It's just a lot of effort for nothing. If you're going to bring in a, a, an eight, an eight and a half, a nine, I'm I'm buzzing about that. But I don't want to upgrade you know, a decent, a decent average player for another decent average player. I don't see how it helps Manchester United, if if, if that makes sense. Uh, Kukurea done well uh, in a back five only. And that's just it. Like, I don't know how, I don't, I, I you know, we, we want to invert a bit more this year. Is that going to work? Can he actually play 
as a as a left back. I don't know. The thing is, though, as well, there's been certain players that again the uh, 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 roles have changed or they've gone to new teams or systems. Look at Granit Xhaka at Arsenal last year. The system changed. Mm. He suddenly had inverted fullback, so he could push on further forward. And he had a season that's so good that Arsenal fans are now gutted he left after four years of them saying, please sell Xhaka. So things can change. But she's goal at the weekend? No, I haven't seen it. I didn't see it. T- typing on Twitter, Xhaka goal. That's a ball comes up to him and he just volleys it straight in the back of the net. I bet they're, they're oh, crying out for him now, trying to shoehorn Havertz in. Let's, let's have a little look. Let's have a little look at this bad boy. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh posting in as well. Off the left, off the left peg. That's a serious shot. That is yeah, serious. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't want it. The, the Amrabat deal is the one I'm worried about. You know, Samuel Luckhurst today has, has actually has poured a lot of cold water over this. Samuel Luckhurst has said, actually, there's 10 midfielders United are looking at. Fucking 10. And Amrabat's likely to not be one of them. But Fabrizio is basically saying, as soon as a Donny or a McTominay leaves, United will move in on this deal. So I, I trust Fabrizio more than I trust Samuel Luckhurst because Fabrizio is who he is. But mm. I'm not gonna lie. I'm 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 worried if we don't because we need it. We, we we were actually listen. I know we conceded two goals in three minutes, but we were really good at the weekend. Outside of that, I watched the game back with no nerves, and the two goals they scored were weird to say the least. Rashford kind of caught you by surprise, didn't it? Well, Rashford was a little, it was funny because a lot of people said, "Why didn't Rashford challenge?" And that's because Rashford thought the player was going to shoot and he wasn't there. And then the player dummied, and suddenly, if Rashford had made a tackle, he'd have won the ball. That's a defend. That's an attacker defending, though. A defender would have made that tackle. And the goalie, look, I've never seen an, 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 an analyst like it. Why did the goalie fall down? Because the attacker dummied twice, and he, he, he went to make the save, and then realized mm. that the shot. He'd already become the scapegoat on Arna. Big time, oh, mate. I have not. I, you know, he's become a scapegoat. He got lobbed in preseason when we gave the ball away in midfield because he was out off his line. And the ridicule for that was astronomical. I haven't seen a single journalist or a single video or a single post or a single anything about Ramsdale being caught off his line when Saka gave the ball away at the weekend. And that's because, right, by the way, because Ramsdale didn't do anything wrong. Ramsdale was where he was meant to be for a sweeper keeper. It was Saka who gave the ball away. But I know for a fact if Man United can see the goal like that, it will be why would look at Onana off his line. It's it's a weird one. He's, Gary Neville's been Neville wrong about a lot. He's been right about a lot. What one thing he's bang on about is that the most scrutinized football position in English football is the Man United number one. It's astronomical. But in in terms of uh, we, we need Amrabat. We need Amrabat massively. You know, we need that energy. We need that size. We need that power. And we need that ball ball carrying and ball playing ability in the midfield. If you could put some size and power into Ericsson, would be fine because he's got the passing range, but mm. he's just too small, in my opinion, in 2023 for some of these midfield battles. If we don't get Amrabat, in fact, we need Amrabat and we need Gravenberch as well. And the, the, have you seen that weird deal? I mean, again, it's come from some top German outlets who reckon that Bayern Munich are up for doing a McTominay Gravenberch swap deal. What? Yeah, I know, right? It's he he joined from Ajax for what forty million euros, something like that. Genuinely, I think like he's but Bayern Munich. If you don't do well in your first season, you're practically not good enough for the football club. That's the way they see it. Um, he he's another player like Kukurea had a bad season. Now everyone's forgetting what he did at Ajax. Everyone's just completely forgot what he did at Ajax. Um, Graven Birch in your midfield. I, if I was a United fan, I would rather Amrabat. I don't think um, I don't think Gravenberch, if Casemiro did get injured and you slot him into that holding role, I don't think he plays that role as well as Amrabat. However, if you if you had a midfield of Casemiro, Gravenberch and Bruno Fernandes, you've got an engine there in Gravenberch. None of this Mason Mount, oh, he can do it, he can do it. You know, uh, man, I'd, I'd be worried about your midfield, mate. You, the Wolves game, you're absolutely... Overrun, right? Oh, you, mate, we, 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 were, we, we were we were we were pillaged. We were pillaged in that game. But we this this is why the Wolves game is hard to the, the Forest game is hard to judge because we went down to two goal down to two goals. So I mean, the second goal they scored just ball missed it. Like it, it was it went over the heads of everybody and then just hit <laughs> Willy Bolly in the face. He didn't even hit it. He just hit him in the face. He, he ran off. Gun. I can't believe it went in. 
But after that, we were very, very good indeed. And our fullbacks inverted at the right times to give us more, more cover in the middle if counterattacks happened. And the manager, and I'm really intrigued to, to see the next few games for United because the manager called it out and said it, it's nothing to do with the midfield. He said it was to do with the front and the back. And, he, and this is where journalists annoy me. They get all this mm. access to managers, but they always ask the wrong questions. So when he turned around and said the midfield have not been the problem in the last two games, it's been the front and the back. The next question shouldn't be, but the fans have been saying there's fitness issues. Don't ask him that yet. The question should be, can you explain what you mean by the front and the back? Because I'm I'm still at a loss. I don't know what that means. I'm a, This is my assumption is what he means is that people from the front and the back haven't been covering in holes when the midfielders push forward. Therefore, there's been holes. And that mm. makes sense to me because when uh, last season, we'll use Arsenal as an example because they were excellent. When Granite Xhaka went forward and Odegaard from the midfield three went forward, the fullbacks inverted. If the fullbacks went forward at the same time as the midfielders, one of their wide attackers will often drop back into a more central position to cover any counters or transitions that everybody calls them now. That's what I assume he meant. And if that's what he means, and the attackers and the defenders haven't been covering their positions they've been instructed to, then the midfield isn't the problem. Per se, does that make sense? And that's where I get annoyed at journalists. Because I'm like, you've got all this access to ask the questions that give us what we want. Instead, you focus on weird Twitter agendas like, I don't think the players are fit. They don't, they don't look fit, but it turns out it's because they're not in the right positions and they're, they're, being, they're being made to sprint 10, 20 more times in a game. Therefore, they look exhausted. It all makes sense. And that, for me, is, is why I'm intrigued to see our next few games. Just a shame our next bloody game's away at Arsenal because we, we always get battered there. Mm. But yeah, we, we, need, we need two midfielders. There's an interesting rumour that someone just sent a link to me uh, on uh, here is that Man United are actually linked to Rico Henry from... Listen, give me Rico Henry at left-back over Kukurea and Regulon. He is a player who I think is really good. He's been pace as well. Rico Henry, and this is exactly what a great shout from whoever is, I don't know if this is a genuine rumor or just what McAveer has said. And this is what I mean. There's players out there. Go there now. I want two midfielders. I do. But if you can, if we could get the money together and go, look, there's 20, 25 million pound Rico Henry, 26 years old, experienced football player at all levels, good fitness record, blistering yeah. pace, great on the overlap, very technically proficient. Rico Henry, I, I would take him... As well. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like I would like that, that. That to me just stands out as a great example of much better business than Kukodea, much better business than a Regulon who haven't made it in the Premier League. I didn't think, as I said, I didn't think Regulon was that bad for you, but there's a reason. His hamstring injury. He, he was, it was like at one point we signed him in 20, I think it was 2020 August up until February. It was like, we couldn't play without him. He was brilliant. Then he got his hamstring injury and it just kind of mm. went to pot. The whole thing went to pot. He do, looks doesn't look a similar player, same player. But Rico Henry, I, I, I'd take him at Spurs. I think mo most Premier League teams, like you said, he's fairly good technically. He's an okay defender, blistering pace. Not many people can get the better of him. I, I'd be happy with that. If that was twenty five million or twenty million pounds at United, I think that's much better than you getting Regulon or Kukurea. I'm not gonna lie. Even I do you know what I like as well. Yeah. Mitchell from Palace. I'm not sure what what. He, he's fees, but I, th I think he's a half decent defender. Yeah, the, the problem is Mitchell from Paris. Listen, so could Rico Henry, yeah, but he'd probably they probably want fifty odd million pound for him, and it's it's just probably too expensive for us. But yeah, listen, from my point of view, again, probably a better option. I don't think he's technically as good as Rico Henry, but he, but he's good. Um, but we have, I say, we've been stung with AWB. I kind of like AWB. I just don't like it. AWB. <laughs> would be a good sign if we had more proficient technical ballers around us and he could kind of blend in with the team, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The problem is he just stands out like a sore thumb because everybody else is... is We don't have a an abundance of highly technical gifted football players at the club. But yeah, Rico Henry, I, I wouldn't mind. But I think you're right. The midfield needs sorting at United because yes, we won at the weekend. It was a brilliant comeback and we performed well. And look, Bruno was... Bruno was a joke at the weekend. He was an absolute joke. Creative ran everywhere, pressed mm. brilliantly. He led the what team. What is it the club tweeted out? Creative machine or something like that, didn't they? Well, no. Um, what's he? Well, I think they tweeted it, but that's what, that's what KD, KDB at two was on. Sat, sat yeah, he's great midfielders, didn't he? It was yeah, he rated them as the, the, best in the, the best in the league, not including himself, obviously. And he said he's just a creative machine, and he is.